Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of Let's Football Live. I hope you guys are fine and uh, enjoying the weekend. The monsoon is here in Mumbai, so uh, can't complain too much, can we? Hello, Vids. Wait for you guys to join. We've got a very special guest joining us. We're actually taking a bit of a diversion on our path of Let's Football Live. So we've had players and ex-coaches. Today we'll be speaking to uh, somebody who is involved in the management side of things of, uh, of football clubs uh, in the ISL. So I'll just wait for you guys to tune in before I get my special guest uh, on today. The Master Empire. Hello, Nitin the Savage. Savage 21 might get a mention today. Or should I say 21 Savage? It's a better way of putting it. Jay Bale. Hello, Abhishek, lover of football. Let's go. Yeah, absolutely. Happy Sports Journalist Day. Thank you very much. Well, it was a couple of days ago, but you know what? We're always celebrating. Uh, sports journalist doing a fine job particularly in this pandemic thank you Abhinash Hitman happy no Kerala Blasters fans no sorry no it's it's not a Kerala Blasters uh, co-owner or a director today but I've got somebody who's connected with Odisha FC built it up from scratch and now we're here uh, Rohan Sharma is going to be joining us so I'm going to get in uh, on this straight away let's see if I have him I can't see him just yet. Ron, if you can, uh, if you can hear me, all right. Can you send me a request so I can, I can try and add you as well. Jen, Janiel, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely safe. Jen, thank you so much. Hope you and your family are safe as well. Ashish, Ashu, thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, very different conversation uh, that I'm expecting today. Uh, usually we talk about players, their challenges and how they go about their business in Indian football and the, and the hero ISL. Today we're going to get a sort of uh, you know, bird's eye view of how clubs are run, how clubs are set up and how fan engagement and things like merchandising and all of these things happen. Uh, challenges of uh, you know, appointing a coach, uh, signing some of the best foreign players uh, that can be signed in, the, in, in a budget for a, for a football team. So if you guys have any more questions, please fire away because I'm waiting for Rohan to, to join me. Let's see if I've got him now. Not yet. Douglas Gladwin. Hello. Yeah, I think I've got a request now. Let's see. Somebody else is trying to send me a request. Well, that, that won't work. Okay, I can't see Rohan just yet. Rohan, if you can hear me all right. Jay Jagannath. Yeah, but the Jagannaths hopefully have tuned into this as well because uh, they're likely to get a big mention today. I did watch the, the masterclass with the Jagannaths uh, and uh, that was a lot of fun. So thank you so much for doing these sessions. I mean, anything that gets uh, people talking about Indian football is, is fantastic, particularly in this time where, you know, there's so much uncertainty going around. Uh, Ishak's asking me about Ogbeche. Well, we did a Facebook Live with uh, Ogbeche uh, a couple of months ago. So you want to check that out on uh, the ISL social media handles. Eastern Cyclone is saying exactly what I believe. Come on, Rohan. Okay, Rohan Zain, I think you're, you're trying to come in from the Odisha handle, is it, Rohan? Right, I thought you were coming in from your own. Waiting for Rohan. It's going around in circles. I hope it's not somebody else on the video. Disha FC handle. My apologies to everybody. Govind Gopa Kumar. Hello. And uh, and and we would we were hoping that we can get him on as well. Odisha has left. Okay. Odisha doesn't like me too much today. And uh, there, there seemed to have been a massive power failure in, in, in Odisha, which is, you know, given the kind of uh, weather conditions that we've had, I'm not surprised at all. I hope it's not that because Rohan is definitely nowhere near Odisha at the moment. Let me see if I can get him on once again. Also, if, if, you're, in, if you're in the UAE, Rohan, it could be a WhatsApp issue. 
uh, it could be a it could be a problem with uh, trying to connect with your uh, with your mobile internet waiting let's see if we can get okay odisha fc has left again I, i'm trying to get odisha fc uh, on this meanwhile if you guys have any questions for me uh, fire away uh, i was hoping to ask some very uh, tricky ones to rohan straight up but yeah i was mentioning how i watched the the juggernauts master class and it was a, it was a fascinating insight into uh, you know into the minds of uh, some of the guys who work behind the scenes uh for odisha fc is so much that goes behind you know making a club run successfully and uh odisha have just finished their first season in in the hero isl so they've got a long way to go meva was asking me to say two words about lionel messi the greatest a fantastic player 700 and counting so say something about atk football club what well, the most successful side in the hero isl three time champions out of six seasons they won they won half the seasons what can you say more about uh, atk football club now so happy for uh, somebody like sumit rathi who did so well for for them uh, which is something that i want to discuss with rohan as well because you know there are there's so many youngsters who got opportunities with the uh, odisha fc the average age of the odisha fc squad currently is 21.71 if i'm or 21.17 if i'm not wrong so let's just say 21 which is absolutely staggering some of the new signings that they've made in indian players i mean excites you so much because you're always looking at isl to provide the platform for some of these younger players and finally is beginning to 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 take shape just the way we all envisioned it to be uh still waiting for rohan guys so let me see i love rohit kumar because i always have him with me Thank you so much Rohit for for tuning in. Uh that doesn't seem to be working. So Let's see if I can get him now. Sorry guys, I know you guys are sending me messages and uh thanks for your patience here and for tuning into this. I'm trying to get Odisha FC uh on to this i know my t-shirt says tomorrow but hopefully it will be today <laughs> okay still waiting for uh yeah odisha fc can't seem to come on uh neither can rohan for some strange reason it could be the connection um let's see yeah these are these are the, the most awkward things about about this pandemic i mean you're trying to work from home everybody is i know and trying to stay safe and at the same time you're trying to make sure that uh, you stay connected and that's where problems come in just one second just hold on let me see if i can just message uh, the isl team and see if they can help me out a little bit here bear with me one second Or you can you can always ask me questions and hopefully i can answer some of them i can't tell you about odisha fc signings i'm not big enough and i'm not good enough so uh so what i do know is that rohan is in dubai and it could be uh it could be something uh, at his end because i i think it was elko shatori who was in uh, oman and we were trying to connect to him and there were some issues and then eventually he had to use some other means to get on to the to the broadcast so uh Uh, eventually he found a way el kushatori always find, uh, finds a way so i'm hoping rohan can do that too today a lot of kerala blasters fans is always uh, yeah really excited about uh, you know jessel carnero staying on there was a great little reveal by kerala blasters by the way that you know he's he's coming back to kalur uh jan janil wants to ask me a question fire away jan hopefully i'll see it amongst all the questions that are coming christian danny asking me about my hair it's nothing man it's just a little bit of spray and that's it but well, thank you so much and my wife cuts my hair now so she's my new hair stylist i've got the most educated hair stylist now ever the previous one was me marcelino marcelino was with us on uh, one of our previous episodes okay i'm going to try and get odisha back on let's see waiting for odisha it's going around in circles 
Oh, I'm good now. finally! Finally! Oh my god! You know, I've been here for like the last ten minutes. I've been like struggling. I've been like, I was like praying. I was in different two different accounts trying to get to you. I I was going crazy, man. I felt bad leaving you hanging out here. How you doing, man? No, I'm I'm very well, thank you. I was going to ask you that, but uh, uh, thanks for your patience, by the way, and keep and oh, no. and, and to keep on trying. I was a nightmare. I was like, I wouldn't scream. I'm like, I'm here. I'm here. I promise. I'm here. I, I came on time. But man, I don't know what the heck had happened. I did it live with the Juggernauts like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Everything was fine. Now today, it was decided to act up. So I guess Murphy's Law. But I heard the 21 Savage Which, coming. No. That's going to happen later. I'll we'll have the 21 Savage <laughs> later. You know what? You won't believe it. I got onto Sp- you. I got onto Spotify to actually yeah. catch up with some of the music that you mentioned on that uh, on that session with Juggernauts, and I yeah, actually yeah. loved it. I, I loved oh, X in particular, which was uh, which was I think uh, <laughs> the future. What was it? it was Twenty One Savage. Was it? Yeah, yeah Twenty One yeah, Savage the and one. Future. Like he jumps in on it. It's great. Yeah. I mean, we can talk rap all day if we have rap football fans. But I've been that's all I've been listening to during quarantine, man. This is a lot of rap music. How have you been? Uh, I'm I'm very well. I'm obviously, trying to work from home now as much as possible. Uh, which you can't really step out over here. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. what I can also see is the, your 94 pairs of sneakers right behind you. Or are they all, or there more? No, there are more. This is just the I call it the wall of fame. Uh, really, I mean, you can see a little bit of it, but there's a lot more. But you know, if I if I can get a little messy on this uh, Instagram live, I'm not the yeah. ISL guy who has the most shoes. There is a particular owner in the ISL, <laughs> Abhishek Bachchan who uh, has probably more shoes than me. And every time I go to a league meeting, I try to wear like the freshest kicks to like kind of impress him and like, yo, kind of this like verbal banter with him. And every time, yeah. cause he's like a Bollywood actor, he has like the way better. It's like the rarest, like, like I can't even believe it. I, I get like really annoyed. because I think I'm feeling pretty cool about my shoes. Then he comes in with even cooler pair. And it's just, you know, <laughs> I, I can't keep up with him, man. He's the worst. So I, it's uh, no point even trying. But yeah, no, but what do you, I, I'm curious, yeah. I got to ask you, I got to ask you because I sure you're going to get a lot of questions with me later. And I want to yeah. know what, you, what do you do in your spare time? Because you're, you're commentating usually seven days a week, five days a week. So what do you do now? Do you like commentate doing your chores? Like, what do you do? Like, uh, you brush your teeth, like I got to brush in this direction. Like, I don't know. What do you do nowadays? Well, I, I, busy with a lot of stuff. See, the Premier League is back, and the Bundesliga is back, oh, yeah. and uh, and and I, and I work with the Star Sports Network, so we've got, we've got okay, we've got access go. to a lot of players because of the of the lockdown, and mm-hmm. we you know we get to chat with them. So, like a Mason oh, Greenwood okay. would not be available otherwise, or an Oxley Chamberlain would not talk to us otherwise because of his busy schedule. But because of the lockdown and him being in a hotel and being able to connect uh, digitally now, it's it's a, it's a lot easier. But but before this becomes a Rohan Sharma live with uh, ISL anchors, let me let me get back to my my questions because that's how it's okay, going to be. Okay, no worries, no uh, worries. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm only joking. But Rohan, thank no. you so much. First of all, I, I and you know, having watched the Juggernauts Masterclass, my uh, a couple of these questions will obviously be repeated for the for the wider audience that is tuning into this now. But uh, but I wanted to know, you know, what what got into Indian got you into Indian football because I believe it was just you watching ESPN. And trying to buy a team in Ahmedabad, and then eventually becoming a corner of Delhi, till finding your way to the east coast <laughs> yeah, of India. Man. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a wild story. I mean, I I really I more or less got into like football because of the U.S. national team, and like I said, you said it yourself, I, it was on ESPN. The ISL was on ESPN, and I was like, whoa, there's like football in India. And back then, I used to call it soccer, and so I was like, oh, okay, I didn't know all this existed. And so I was actually, I wanted to go into an MLS kind of thing because, you know, being an American, I wanted to do an MLS. But my father was like, no, since, you know, we are Indian and we should always give back to the country and do something in India because they need more and there's more areas of growth. Uh, we should go involved in India. And so at first we wanted to buy a team in Ahmedabad and uh, the league said, nah, we're not interested in selling or anything right now. We have our eight teams and then a couple months later, uh, we further found out that they, they said Delhi is for sale. And so we bought in as 55% uh, owner at that time. And uh, yeah, yeah it, the rest is history, I say. So ever since then, there's been part of foot, Indian football. Oh, fantastic. And I'm um, just looking back at the, at the last season that Odisha had. You were, you were in the mix for the playoffs till almost the very end till Lucian Goyan's goal at, uh, in Mumbai, you wow. know, sort of, sort of 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but see, the, it was it was poetic in so many ways because Goyan scoring in Mumbai against his former side, yeah. it knocked it knocked Odisha out. is is a, is obviously a different story. But but it was just one of those things that you were in the running till the very end, despite yeah. having a team, uh, you know, with a, with an average age of Indians who twenty three and a half and and all of that. And that's something I wanted to touch upon as well. But there was a question from Bhakti Mukhi, which I wanted to take first up, which was why you chose Odisha and why not another state or a union territory for that matter. Well, at, to give this the whole the whole story behind it, we were never really interested in moving. Even though Delhi had a lot of problems, we weren't looking to move unless it was for the right reasons. Uh, when we had a meeting, I didn't have the meeting with my father. Had a meeting with the chief minister. They talked about a lot of things, and they said something about football. And they explained very, very broad, like succinctly and broadly what they want to do with sports in Odisha. And frankly, yeah. that was very seductive to us because Odisha is, is such a forward-thinking state in how they want to promote sports, how they want to grow the state. And I thought one thing we lacked in Delhi is we weren't having a cohesive culture, right? Because in Kerala, you have a culture. In Northeast, you have, you know, different states. You have a, at least a footballing culture, Kolkata, Bengali culture. Odisha has that pride, the Odia pride. And I love the fact they were willing to, like, help us out with the infrastructure, which we had a problem in Delhi. Everything was more centrally located. No traffic and no pollution is also a really very, very, very good thing to have. And it, it just made sense that, you know, having, working with a government that wants to work with sports, wants to grow football, wants to develop kids, which follows our ideologies, it made sense. It was a perfect marriage in that way. Ah, fantastic. And, you know, somebody just mentioned, I think it was Juggernaut's Pune. By the way, I'm amazed at how many, how many sections of Juggernaut, uh, Juggernauts are there now. I mean, there's, you know there's one in literally every city. I, I'm gutted it's not in Bhopal because that's my hometown. Do you know why? I'll tell you why. You know who's like the head of that? all this? You know, Shubham, Shubham's dad is really the head of this, all this organization. Shubham's dad somehow, I don't know how he's doing this, because Shubham's dad and family have lived in different kinds of states. Every time yeah. you go to a game, one of Shulam's family members is there. I don't know how it is. Like aunt, uncle, cousin, mom, sister, dad. They're always there. They're always like, they're more like, they're like that's why I've told them that you're this point, the head of the jug, like, juggernauts uh, nationally in India, because I need you to kind of like go out there because you're just creating all these different programs like Mumbai and like, I mean, like where would he find this? But I, I love it. It's so crazy to me to see this and so much fun. To have the support and everywhere yeah. we go, we have a huge amount of fans everywhere now. And it, it, it is to me, it is like wow, it, it gets you emotional a little bit. You're like, wow, holy crap, who would have thought? Yeah, it's 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 absolutely fascinating because you know, sudden, suddenly you uh, you'll put out a post or something, and you'll you'll get interaction from a juggernaut's Pune or a juggernaut's Mumbai for that matter. Yeah. And you would have never never imagined it. And as they said it, you know, Disha is India's best kept secret because you, you would never imagine. <laughs> Uh, something, something like this to happen at that scale. So it's fantastic what you guys are doing and what you've put in place already, Rowan. But, yeah. uh, you know, there was, there was another question from Arnav Singh uh, okay. who, who wanted to know what your experience of your first year in Odisha was like and how supportive, since you mentioned the government of Odisha, how mm -hmm. supportive was the government of Odisha in, in making this whole project come together so successfully in the first year? So uh, let me, I'll get off coffee with Karen, Karen with you a little bit. Uh, when the after my after my first after my the last year in Delhi, I was a little bit in a really bad headspace. Like I wasn't happy because yeah. it felt like things were static. You know, we weren't getting the huge amount of. We would see too many away fans versus home fans. We would every day we had players who were not happy with different things in Delhi because of the distance and and we were losing and it was just too much. And then I was kind of in a really dark place. I was thinking, I don't, do I even want to go back to India again? And then when I came to Odisha. For the first time, that all that really changed. It really, really did. When when the team came off the air, off the plane, and they got that huge mob. I don't know if you ever saw that video, but they got this huge mob of everybody, juggernauts, yeah. with the vehicle, voice screaming, and they announced every player who come out the field. It charged me up. It it really it, it all really and and this is not trying to be pandering to the fan base. It's really because of juggernauts I got back into it, and it and really off the field, it was a great success, Odisha, for me this year. We sold so many tickets. Yeah. We saw we had so much fan engagement. I like I, I know people now in the fan club. I like I see them come every game. Like you know, in the past it'd be like like different people coming to different games. We had the same amount. If you go to certain stands, you know, you start to see the same guys and the same chants and the same people. And to me, 
that's why we do football, right? You, you, you enjoy it because it's the community yeah. aspect of it. And I'm seeing the community aspect of it when fans are signing, they're making posts of Shubham or Martin or Ari Don, and they come in after the game to buy the buses, and they sign, they take the selfies. And I think that's so crazy. And, I, and, and really, that, that made me good, feel good. Obviously, on the pitch, is like up and down because on the pitch, we had like crazy games where Ari Don yeah. or Zisco or Jerry or, or, or Shubham or someone will go crazy or, you know, on route towards the later stages. But, you know, we lost to all the good teams. And that's where, even though I was pissed that we didn't make it to the semifinals, I thought to myself, if we couldn't beat Bangalore ATK and go at any point during the season, we didn't deserve to be in the top. Because to be the top four, you got to beat the good teams. And I didn't want to go to the playoffs yeah. the first round and then lose to, like, I don't know, I think it was number one seed was Goa. I wouldn't want to lose to Goa 3-0 at home. That would be very embarrassing for me. Uh, I'd rather take it as a learning experience and say, guys, all right, we know where we are. We are almost there. We are half step. Now we can take it to one more step further. And that's why you see me in the market. I'm kind of signing everybody who's alive with a pulse. I'm like, yeah, I'll sign you. So I want to make sure we, have, we, we make up the mistakes of last season. Um, the government... I mean, amazing. They've been helpful, extremely helpful. We're in talk with them every day. Uh, yeah. They are really trying to help us out. And, and, and one thing I know in India, there tends to be a lot of bureaucracy. In any government, really. But you, you call, there's like, you have to go to this guy. Go to this guy, he will tell you his secretary, and his secretary will tell you this secretary. And then you go to the under secretary, and then you come back to the guy. In Odisha, I love the fact I can just, you know, you text someone or call someone, and boom, there's a meeting. Yes or no, five minutes in and out. It's, it's done. And usually, 80% of the time, it's Yes. And that's what I really like about the government because it reminds me of a very – it reminds me of Dubai, actually, because it's very – trying to be expanding. They want to be more than just Odisha. They want to go and build a name. And I'm, try, I'm the same hungry yeah. guy trying to make a name for myself in Asian football uh, in the club sense, not me. But I want to do the same thing and build the club up. Yeah. And that's why I think the vision is the same. And that's what I love about it, really. Yeah, can't disagree with, with the experience of watching the Hockey World Cup there, uh, yeah. Rowan, and, uh, and also coming there for the Super Cup. I mean, the, fa- the facilities are absolutely fantastic. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you said, you know, it's, uh, the, the raw material is all there. You just have to, uh, so the foundation's there, and you're just basically trying to build on it now. But uh, there was another one from Pranav Photography. In fact, there was a double question. There was one from Ankan Mishra and, and Pranav Photography, both similar. All right. Uh, and it spoke about footballers in Odisha. And I know you've answered that on the Juggernaut Masterclass, but I was intrigued yeah. and I wanted you to answer this Go here as it. well, which is how is the club going to develop root level talent in Odisha, uh, men and women? And how yeah. will uh, the management, which is yourself and, uh, and your team, uh, helping in aspiring local footballers, uh, you know, realize their dreams for uh, Odisha mm-hmm. FC? This is something like, it's like a really almost like a no brainer. Like, okay. Uh, one thing... I, I'm very happy with my club and what we have done uh, is we always try to promote a lot of young kids. And we, when we, even the first thing we started off with, why we kind of lost, we kind of moved on from the Marcelino, Maluda, Godze, and brought in a lot of young stars is because we wanted to develop those kids for the future. And even through our under 18, under 15, under 13 program, why we partner with Aspire is to grow these kids. And it's kind of what the league's vision is, right? We're trying to both develop young talent. And one thing I'm proud to say is that we have seen, and, 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 and thanks to Aspire, really, because they helped train our coaches. We sent boys over, like Shabam, and now we sent Chunk-Tay, Chunk-Tay's little brother, uh, Ruben, we sent all these young kids there to train, is to grow this young town. Now, last year, because we kind of moved in within a month, which is unheard of for any sporting anything, I don't think anybody has moved a whole team to a whole new state in a month, even in the NFL or NBA. Uh, we didn't have time to really set up our grassroots academy in Odisha this year. Hopefully, with COVID-19, it makes the things a little bit more difficult, but we're hoping to have a residential academy start now in Odisha to grow these local talents. And listen, I'm there to always grab good, young Odia talent because that's what, at the end of the day, we're an Odisha FC club. We have to. It won't work if we don't. Um, uh, we need a time to develop. The, we, that'll take some time to get those kids in Odisha now to get them to our level. There are some good young Odia talent who are playing, um, like BK Oram, and, but he's in Bangalore, so uh, I can't say too much about him now. But, uh, you know, uh, but there are kids like him, even on the under-15 national team, and there are kids who are at that level that we would love to sign, and I think they are interested in come playing for us. It's just, you know, contractually yeah. right now, things are always very difficult when there are contracts involved. But I do, I do foresee in the next couple of years there'll be a lot of uh, new young Odia talent coming outside of Shubham and Ankit. And for women, listen... 
that's the other thing I've been, I've been really, I, I need to do. And I, I told this, I think on my master class, I told this on my podcast. I, I couldn't do it in Delhi because I didn't have the right facilities. In Odisha, I have the facilities. And I really, 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 really want to do this. Uh, have a proper women's team because it is, we have Odia women are actually really, really good in football. I'm a, being from America, I see how much the U.S. women kick butt on a daily basis internationally. Uh, for me, it's the same kind of pressure on me that I want to do that same thing. I was hoping this year would be the year that I kind of take over this is Odisha police women's team. Uh, I would love to have taken over that this year itself. But with now, again, with the COVID thing, and we're not sure when the league is starting, where it's going to be, what the tech thing is, I don't know if I can happen this year again. I'm hoping next year for yeah. sure it's going to happen. It's going to 100% out. You're going to make a really good Odisha FC women's team to complete in the uh, Indian Women's League. Uh, give Gokul and Kerala yeah. some challenge uh, because they're kind of monopolizing and it's a good way for us to kind of push our... Cause we, I really do believe in women's football. I think we're going to get some good women's football. I want to make everything yeah. equal. Men, women, kids. When you go to Odisha FC club, it's equal. No matter who you are, what you are, what, it's an equal-based thing. So I'm hoping... I'm really, really hoping if I can do it this year... It'll be amazing. I'll be lucky. If not, then next year for sure. For sure, next year. Yeah, and also give a, a and it'll also give a chance to so many uh, you know female footballers from the from the state of Odisha who are applying their trade in different clubs. So so that's 100%. It, it's fantastic, and it'll just complete the family as well. Uh, if you manage to realize that dream, Rowan, as soon as possible, yeah. we wish you well uh, oh, for sure. that. But speaking of speaking of the next couple of steps, uh, there was a question from love the name by the way, uh, Adolf. Mirthong Manbha. I, uh, my apologies <laughs> if I've got the if I've got the pronunciation wrong. <laughs> to start off on uh, a lucky note, I got it a little okay in the, towards the end. Uh, I got worried. I so like, uh, <laughs> let's just say AMM. AMM has uh, given me a question <laughs> to ask you, which is, which is, what is your vision for Indian football in the next ten years with all the changes that are proposed with the AFC and all of that? Um, what, what do you what, what do you say will happen in the next? Uh, I mean, I know you're not you're not an oracle, but what do you think I could be the right scenario for Indian football? In, you could be, yeah, why not? <laughs> in the next 10 years, so on. Ah, oh, man, that's a good question. I think, I know the average Indian fan, average Indian football fan is very yeah. passionate about the future of Indian football. We're, we see the other leagues, we see the other countries, and we're like, why can't we be like them? Why can't we get the EPL? Why can't we see the way La, the La Liga is doing things. And, and I'm hoping people stay patient because I do think we're going to get to the point where we're going to play in the AFC Champions League more consistently. I don't know if we're ready to beat Japan one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not sure if we're ready to play Iran, South Korea, because they they're doing things. But I do think we'll be at a stage where we're kind of like, like Uzbekistan, like kind of in a place where we will be in contention. We can make some noise. Uh, on the on the national stage, at least, we're trying to build some noise because now every year, more and more money, time, investments, development is going to Indian football every year. And you and I both know, we remember how it was in season four when I met you for the first time and we were having a draft. Yeah. Now we're having a whole, yeah. now we have 10 teams. We have now, we're doing AFC. And before that, that was like a dream. Not a dream, but it was like maybe next, in the next couple of years. And now we're, we're evolving slowly. Um, I know there's a lot of naysayers that are saying, you know, ISL, you guys are going to kill everything when we hold dear. And I don't think so. I think we're just taking time. It'll take, it's, it's just people learning. You know, nobody who bought into the ISL are really yeah. footballing experienced people. I mean, yes, you can argue JSW, or no, Tata is the exception, I would say. JSW, kind of, you can make the argument for. But it's going to take time to get that kind of same le level of kind of moving things along. I think having Martin Bain coming in to the, to the league is a big thing. Um, he's kind of doing a really good job trying to compartmentalize things, trying to make this a more professional league. And I do think, guys, in 10 years, this league will be, you'll be, everybody will be very, very happy again. Everybody's going to be relaxed. We'll be running good stories about the league. It'll be happening. The, the player development's going to happen. We'll be part of, it'll be a little bit easier to have any promotion relegation. I don't know. I would assume in 10 years it probably would by then. But I think it's going to be fine. I think we're on the right track. It's taking step by step. But we'll get there. We'll get there, guys. Yeah. And, and along the way, uh, you know, in, in trying to get there, Rowan, you know, you, you overcome a fair few challenges uh, as well. <laughs> what, for, from, an, from, an owner's, from an owner's or a director's point of view, what are some of these challenges? And, 
and you know to add to that you know what are the financial implications of something like this pandemic and uh, you know how that could change the way you strategize in the next couple of seasons so most of my challenges uh happened in my in my past in in, in delhi really uh i what well, the first real challenge we had is when we bought into the club and then our co-investor kind of left way earlier than we expected him to leave uh cuz we were at 55% and in a matter of 2 months we had he had to divest for personal reasons and we had to kind of become 100% owners in the span of 4 months which we never really expected that to happen uh yeah that was our first challenge and then the second challenge of course was you know things in like stadium rent and 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 getting things around all this infrastructurally because in india the, the one of the hardest things will, and people will say i think you interview 10 owners i think all 10 owners will say struck infrastructure in india is the hardest thing to kind of get ready because stadiums are not yours your practice pitches are kind of iffy and buddy uh getting the whole football base when i talked to ivan bravo when, when the first thing he said when we were going to move to odisha he said do you have a football base and i asked him what is that because is your youth academy is your stadium is your practice field is your apartments all within 10 minutes from each other and i said well odisha would be but in delhi it's not and he goes no for me is no brainer go to odisha and i think when you don't have these things and you don't have and also don't have a government supporting you kind of saying guys we'll help you if there's a problem call us feels not ready call us kind of thing then it becomes really really hard to survive in indian football and we've seen this all the time with with with, with i league teams isl teams it we don't have these kind of things together it makes a big deal um i know i saw akshay the owner of goa he recently has reached out to the government of mal i hope they you do because what FC Goa does to the community in Goa is fantastic across the board. I know that um even like uh, uh I know Chennai does their things. I mean, it it's these things need to happen to make it sustainable because without having all this ecosystem in place, we're very ad hoc. We're we're putting our apartments one way, practice with one day, this thing and that's that's it feels not compartmentalized, compartmentalized. It makes things a little bit harder. Now, with COVID, I mean that it's it's more on a financial thing because it it hurts your kind of your parent company investing and it. it's harder to kind of uh to spend as yeah. much as we a lot of teams have spent this usually in the past by now. Um for us knock on wood it hasn't been a huge thing because we're in shipping and people still need goods and supplies and so knock on wood it's it's been okay. What has hurt us is our plans for the summer we're going to do a lot of grassroots things where we were going to do a lot of stuff north of just bhubaneswar because it's not just bhubaneswar is rukula it's the hinterlands it's like the villages we wanted to go up further up north and do all this academies and set up all our things and now we can't because of that so on a developmental scale and maybe in some this degree yeah. financial and that way it has hurt us um but i'm hoping you know that, you know this is things happen for a reason to so step back and this gives us more time to plan um now with my new coach which i'm sure we're going to talk about later uh this yeah. gives him a chance to kind of develop what he has in mind and how he wants to see things going forward so i'm hoping it just takes his time and we'll get things right well let's talk about it now because uh, i was just going to come to stuart baxter in a yeah. moment he's somewhere in scandinavia i had a chat with him a yeah. couple of days ago thanks to uh, odisha football club and no he was telling me that i, I think he's in sweden or uh, yeah, is sweden. he in sweden i think he is yes yeah, yeah. yeah. he's like a swedish uh yeah that's right that's right so uh he 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 spoke about And, and there's a very famous story that's going uh, that's going around which to backs which is his conversation with some of the south african cricketers and in, including faf to plessy and you know playing on the front foot in india and telling yeah. tell, encouraging indian footballers to not be on the back foot as much what was the thinking that you went on your front foot in the pandemic and went for stuart baxter uh man i mean i can't say enough good things about coach baxter i mean uh, i interviewed probably close to 27 28 people i think that's the exact number uh of coaches wow. to 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 find the right guy because coach kumbau one thing coach kumbau did is uh he was a good guy to have in your club because he always I mean you've met him very friendly very outgoing you throw anything at him he's a cowboy as I call him he would do anything it doesn't matter where you go um what i yeah. wanted it was someone who has that same mentality but can also improve upon the things we lacked last year on the pitch and what i did was i had you know i i, I interviewed a lot of people um and um i of my top 3 i had all of them make a presentation with the players i gave them the presentation of the players i have signed who i will sign yeah. and the, and i told them you know who we had i said how would you inter- in your system how would you do it and 
I talked to three, the, my last final three or four, and Coach Baxter just he just had his thing together. He oozes charisma. He came off, you know, the Afcon where he took against Mohammed Salah in Egypt and beat him one nil in his own backyard, which I yeah. think is outstanding. I mean, his experience across the globe is is incredible. He's a guy who has been through it all, who knows what to do, and. And we had our call. Actually, we had a, to tell you, I don't know if this has been public knowledge, but on Friday we had our first Zoom call with all the players who are we've signed and Coach Baxter. And, you know, and he set the same tone right there. So, guys, we can't just stick at 100%. We'd be 150%. we got to work harder and all those coach platitudes. But he said it in a way that, you know, charges you up. And I like the way that he is communicating. He's getting to me, his hands already dirty with the boys trying to plan – um, their fitness regimens now since we're in COVID and lockdown, um, doing all sorts of things. And I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the way he's doing things. And he's just a dynamic, even though he's 66, I think he is the oldest in the history of the ISO managers. I think I saw that. I'm not sure if that's official stat. Uh, but if yeah, he is... I, I think Abhijit Barali, Abhijit Barali can check that for us. Yeah, I'm sure he could. Uh, I, he is one of the oldest, if not the, he is one of the, and, but he still has that energy. He still has that passion for the game. Um, we have Coach Gary, yeah. uh, who's a former Arsenal man for 15 years, coming. So our coaching staff is crazy. And I'm really excited that we have a really solid coaching staff who's really going to yeah. put the boys to their paces because we have a young squad. So I, I'm, I'm really very confident with our coach. Have you got an Indian coach in mind as well to assist Stuart Baxter? And, uh, yeah, Gary? yeah. So what I, I have, I have, I downed the three, uh, co- again, three. I don't know what's the magic number for me. Uh, we had three. I had my pick of which one I would like. Um, coach spent this week interviewing all three of them. Um, he finished his last one on Friday itself. So he is writing his notes this week, and I'm assuming, and then I'll probably know this week I'll get in touch with him. Um, there are, we have, of course, two or three uh, good names out there. And, and I'm really – thankfully, the league went from AFC Pro to A-League if, if they're trying to get the AFC Pro, which kind of helped us because at first it was AFC Pro, and I was nervous because your choice is a lot smaller then. But now I have a little bit more of a, of a breathing room to choose from, and I, and I do have one or two candidates who I'm very bullish on, and I hope yeah. that Coach sees it. Because right. the person will be heading our academy as well. The Indian coach is going to take a very big role in that way, heading, uh, making sure the academies run smoothly, training the boys, the younger kids. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a very big role for us, an Indian coach. I asked in particular because uh, because I, I I went through your squad and I mean not that twenty three and a half was any old which was the average age of your Indian players last year. Now yeah. you dropped it down to twenty one point something. Twenty one savage. Yeah, there you it. go. It comes back. It comes <laughs> back. <laughs> it's it's incredible how 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 you're investing in uh, in youth at this at this moment in time. Which uh, you know which which begs the question. You 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 said how you're looking at Odisha to be an an Ajax kind of a team, not a Southampton. Yeah. You don't want to be a feeder yeah. club. You want to build a dynasty over the next six, seven years. You want a team that grows together and, you know, and they stay together as a, as a cohesive unit. Yeah. Uh, but what is your chat with some of these youngsters like so that they don't get tempted uh, to, you know, ply their trade outside? I know it's not very easy, but it can't be very, it can't be very easy either to keep them together as a unit because there's always a Changte who's looking to go to Chennai. I think... It depends on the mentality of the player. Not, this is not like a diss against junk there or anything. But one thing is I like about our boys is they Indian young kids tend to be loyal. They, if you show that you have a chance to them, they are very, very appreciative and they, they do love the fact they are the club. They're part of the club. And uh, one, I don't, I'm trying to I think where I want to address first. I'll go with this way first. So I'll tell you this openly. Vineet, Nanda, and Shubham, all three of them had offers to go elsewhere with more money, one, one of them got an offer from an international club that they declined to stay in Odisha. And they, because they, they're like, you know, Rohan, you gave us a chance. We were, nobody would give us a chance. We won't take that reward. We it back for you. And what I'm trying to give is a mentality of players who want to fight for each other, not just for the club, but for each other. Like even for someone like Sajid, who initially I hadn't planned to resign him. But Vanit and Nanda both approached me and said, sir, Rohan, sir, you know, he's part of our family. Let's get him back. And I said, Sajid, if you can't get a starting role anywhere else, I'll bring you back. And he could. I said, okay, I'll bring him back. And I think he'll do well in this system with Coach's new system. And I want to create yeah. like that family aspect where they know that we have each other's backs um, through thick and thin. Then, obviously, you know, like Chante, you know, we we tried our best to keep Chante, but you know, sometimes people value different things more than what it is, and that's his prerogative. I don't blame him. He got to the finals. Um, we got Jerry, yeah. who I'm very, very happy with. I think fits more of what we're trying to build within this club a little bit more. 
Um, that gave Nando a little more chances to try out. Now we've got Isaac coming in. So I think I won't keep everybody, and that's why I have my youth teams going, my under-18, my reserve team, all this kind of stuff. So when they leave, that I have some guy like Akshana and Rashab now who are new guys getting kind of in the limelight a little bit, that they can take their place. But I feel that yeah. if you show these players the same amount of respect and the amount of give them the time, you give them the chance, they always, always have – you pay that back. And I see – like I saw the other day, uh, and I'm not trying to get messy here, but I saw a blogger – from one of the more reputable Indian football media sites saying, you know, ISL clubs don't develop youth. You know, this is a whole thing that they always try to get players and they sit on the bench. And I'm thinking, are you crazy? This is all I want to do is develop these kids because if they grow together and they are their family, then, then they don't want to leave each other. They are close. They are bonded. You should, and our, our locker room dynamic is fantastic. But honestly, on the pitch, they all have each other's backs. So I'm hoping this is the last year I have to mass – purchase a lot of young talent because by this point I feel the guys I've gotten now are really good with Toiba with Isaac with Paul uh, Gora being there now um, Sara Mayer Hendry uh, you know already I have these guys so I think for the next three four years if I if I get them going and they stay they're gonna and I'm winning then suddenly everybody because everyone stay for the winner everyone stay for the winner and I'm hoping if I get to that point with these boys they're gonna be like we listened that we did it. I trusted Rohan. I trusted the club. We're ready to go far now. And I think that's what's going to happen. I, I really do believe it. Listen, Rohan, next time you're in an owner's meeting with Abhishek Bachchan, he, he can tell you about his sneakers, but you can tell him about the young players that, you, that you've been signing as well. So, so you'll win <laughs> that contest quite, quite yeah. comfortably. <laughs> <laughs> he still has Chunky, no, though. I can't fight him. He, has took, he took my baby from me, so I can't, I can't get too bad. <laughs> Yeah. That guy Henry and Sarah. Yeah, so let's see what happens now. The has changed. I was just coming to. I was just coming to Henry. Uh, yeah, you can you can have him at left back, and you can have him go against Changte possibly the next time he's playing as an inverted winger. But but you know, jokes apart, you, you mentioned how you how you read an article, and and I know that you're very active on social media. You're never shying away from you know expressing your opinion. And this is yeah. this is not this is not to ask you something controversial. This is this is oh, me please, genuinely be asking you. <laughs> About how you respond to some of the some of the criticism. How 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 does it affect you as a you know as a director as a co-owner when you when you look at some of the feedback you know you're you're trying to build a base for a new club but there's always yeah. somebody trying to pull you down. It's part of life, man. I'm sure even you get some deep thing. But you know what the thing is? Yeah, of course, I, I, all I, of us do. <laughs> I, I I realize after a while that you have to be yourself out here, and and if people like you, they'll like you. If they don't like you, they don't like you. Uh, I was talking to someone, Nevin Thomas, I don't know if you know him. He said, Rohan, you're the most polarizing person in Indian football. People either love you or they hate you. And I said, yeah, holy crap, that's true. Because it, it is what it is. It's my personality. And I'm kind of like that obnoxious American in that way, that if I see something like outlandish, like I told you, like that guy who said ISL teams don't develop any young players. And I got mad. And I said, bro, that's a clown statement. Are you? How, my average age of my team is 21. I, last year I put – all the youngest squad in, the, uh, in, in, in my, in one of the youngest squads in the ISL. And not just my team, Jump Street 4 too, Kerala too. So what is this, you're saying this, for what purpose? Just to be controversial? And one thing is, I don't like yeah. when people just lie on the internet or they'll say something because the way the nature of the internet is, if someone types it, it's true. No matter what it is, they'll, whatever it is, they'll just type it and it becomes fact. And, and because a lot of the owners are big time CEOs who are really busy with their actual jobs, or they're actors who are busy with their careers. Uh, I feel like in one way, I have a little bit of a, of a gap where I can speak out for either the ISL, Visha MC, for what we're doing here. Um, I know sometimes the league gets a little nervous because I will say anything and that sometimes I feel like they're like, uh-oh, uh, Rohan's tea is something. Let me, let's make sure it's okay. But uh, I, yeah. I do feel like if I'm not outspoken, people will sometimes run away with narratives that are not necessarily true. And I don't like that. I don't like bullies. I don't like people who kind of lie just to get for clout, as they say. Um, so I try my best not to be get too much into it because there's always going to be anybody. There's going to be one guy with that fake profile picture of a Twitter egg and with one follower who says, you know, Rohan eats cats or something weird like that. And I, I, you, ignore, you have to ignore that. I, that one I can't help him with. But if it's something like when they're saying you guys, you know, only care about is not, you know, trying to develop, trying to get youngsters because it's cheap or to do this. Dude, I made public de declaration. I want to send this jingle on my team. You think I, I'm trying to go cheap on this? I, I'm here to, like, build a good squad. 
but I'm trying to play smart about it. I want to develop a squad for the next, like you said, a dynasty. So my best advice, yeah. you tune out the haters, you be you, be as you as you much as you can be. They love you, they love you, they hate you, they hate you. And that's what it's going to be, I guess. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, sometimes with, with replies, it's more about is it true, is it necessary, and is it kind? And, you know, sometimes the third filter automatically stops you from, from replying to some of these uh, the messages that will come. But you've you got to stick to your goal. And your, your goal has been to, to, to build a team in the, in the East Coast, which has made people like the Kalinga Brigade, the Juggernauts in the Eastern Cyclone, as, I, as I've just gotten to know, very proud. So I'm going to take a few fan questions, Rowan. Uh, yeah. that have been coming in. So um, this is more like a, you know, a, a quick fire, rapid fire that, we, yeah, that, for, that, that I try and play. So, so, so let, let's, see, let's see if we can make it as quick as possible. So Pratik, the historian says, Aridane or Onwu? Oh, crap. Uh, Aridane. Sorry, Onwu. Aridane. Aridane, because I love, I, love, I love Aridane. Aridane is the new yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll get Aridane. a chance later on to ask you about uh, Onwu's impact as well, because he, yeah, uh, because yeah. he looked a completely different player. Um, then Shrion Panigrahi says, um, how positive are you about our chances for getting into the Champions League next year? Ooh, that's a good question. It depends on the foreigners. I haven't seen the foreigners yet, so I can't uh, give you a 100% confident answer yet because we have a younger team and there's a lot of good teams in the ISL this year, but with Goa going younger, I don't know, AT yeah. ATK is more or less the same. I have no idea what to expect from Mumbai with, with Sergio Libera. It's going to be a tough fight. I, I hope we can at least minimum be top four. I have told the players we got to get Champions League. It, the, our expectation is Champions League, minimum tip, top four. But I got to see the foreign players first. I haven't gotten anywhere that, near that yet. So I can't give you an honest answer yet. But we, it's our goal, man. We want to get it. We want to get it. Look, I don't know about Chiranjeevi, but you certainly put the Mumbai media guy under some pressure over here. But... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> The next one from uh, I am Krishnu Sarma, who says, "What type of signing is Odisha FC going for?" Ooh, for I think the foreigners is what he means. I'm uh, guessing he means the foreigners. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, the profile is has to be a little bit older now, but not like 35, 34, 33 range. We want to get someone in the 28 to 32 much experience. Listen, coach has. Uh, I'm. I think we're gonna get some South African players because coach has said that publicly and. Coach does know South African players more than I would say anybody would know any kind of player. If being national team coach yeah. twice and coaching in the league. So I, I would feel he's more adjusted to that. Um, he's also looking for a lot of good players who are kind of really good dribblers. He gave, he's finding some good. He found me one player that didn't work out because uh, he found some checks on him personality-wise. We, we were looking for a good captain. We want a guy who will help really the team push them, who can communicate because sometimes... Uh, some of the foreigners are not as good as communicating on the pitch with the Indian players. And since we have a young team, we need a guy who's patient, kind of gelling the room together. Um, so stuff like that. Um, well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping one of our boys from last year can come back. It's up to the coach. I've submitted my recommendations, but it has to fit his, what his vision is. So if we can keep one of whether it's Anwu or Ari or, or Zisco, it's up to the coach to really decide and uh, I leave it to him. Uh, when when the team sat down to discuss how many questions we can take today, there was there were I, I don't know how many questions there were about Jingen coming to to Odisha FC because you do it do it do it do it do it, do it. <laughs> you've gone public about uh, you've yes. really, you you know you, you said it like Sunil Chetri once came up with a you know with with this with this public statement saying come on guys support us abuse us if you want but come and support us so Jingen if you are listening to this you said on uh, on that Jagannath's master class you will be you will be the captain of the coach wants it to be so. Uh, Give us, give us a message for Sunday's Jingen fans here who want to, who, who want to see you in a future shirt. <laughs> At this point, I feel like a desperate, I'm like a desperate like boyfriend or girlfriend. Keep going after this guy. But, uh, you know, I, I can't say enough about how much, I would, how much it would mean to have Jingen on, on this team. And I, I, I've told it to everybody who will sit still long enough to listen. Um, I, know, I know there are a lot of clubs after him. And, and my biggest disadvantage is uh, Odisha is a smaller state. So if you want to go to Mumbai... It's a more capital city. You have Mumbai nightlife, as we all know. Um, Goa, if you go to, if you, I don't know if Goa is even interested, but Goa has like, the beaches. Rudisha is still developing, but what I wanted to sell him on is the fact that here, I want him to feel like this is kind of his club as well. And as one of the most senior players, it's easier for him. And people gave me guff, by the way, by saying that he could be the captain of the coach once. He was captain of Kerala for like three years. I mean, why, that's not how I should make that, that, that leap. And we have a bunch of younger squads. Yeah. And I don't think we need or Nanda or Shubham are going to be like, oh no, you got Jigen and now he's captain. We're so upset. 
they're gonna be so happy that we have Jing on our team. That makes a big difference. Um, I, yeah. I have sent a proposal. I've, I've written a personal proposal to him to say, like, you know, how he can make the team a difference. Um, at this point, it's it's kind of up to him to decide. Um, I love the guy. I respect him so much. I even grew my hair out like Jingen for this purpose. Uh, my idea is, my idea for the first, if we have people who can come into the match for that first game, is everybody will have beards and like fake ponytails. We'll make, we'll give like these fake ponytails. So we have like everybody like Jingen in the cloud. So like Jingen masks. So everybody can be a Jingen for that first whole match if he comes signs us. I think that would be phenomenal. And I would distribute that like hotcakes because I think that would be the best thing. Have Jingen masks a wall of Jingens. Just looking at him, like I, like being John Malkovich, that would be crazy. And he'd be oh, so wow. popular, I, Adisha. He'd be so popular, Adisha. This, in there. This sales pitch has to go out to Sandeep Jing, and if he's not tuned in, I swear. In this, so I SJ. swear. <laughs> if I had a shirt right now, this is Jing, I would have pulled it up right now. I wish I did. <laughs> I, I Jing for pregnant president. I don't know what you want, but I hope I hope he comes. I would love him here, man. We all really want him here. We all really want him here. Yeah. And it's ironic that he, if he, if he, if he does turn up for Odisha FC, he'll be the oldest Indian player you have, I think. If yeah, I'm not wrong, he is. He <laughs> and he's is only 26. Him, him, and Ravi Kumar. Him and Ravi Kumar, I think. Are the and Ravi, yeah, and Ravi. That's right. Two oldest guys on the team. The rest of all, yeah, and that's what I said. And and it'll it'll make a big boost to the team. I mean, they all like everybody looks at the team yeah. in the squad. And if you if you think about the tiers of top Indian players, like the pyramid, like there's a pyramid. The top tier, there's for me, there's three players only: Chetri, Jingin, and Tapa. Then those are the, to me the top three. Like you want to like, on like crazy, these are the top three guys. And I, yeah. I, I ha- having someone like that come to your to your team is like a no brainer. Like Kevin Durant coming to the Nets or Kawhi Leonard going to the Clippers. <laughs> yeah. It's a no brainer. I want them to come. I'd be loving to love them to come. <laughs> yeah, that that'll be a great combo if you get Tapa and Jingle stopped into no, Malone in, uh, in, in a totally I different. I can't make it top. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be that lucky. I have Vinit. I'm good enough for Vinit. Vinit to me is my best midfielder. He's my favorite. He's my favorite midfielder. So I can't. I I am happy with my Vinit. Tabla can stay in uh Fair. in Chennai and be happy. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, Vinit tries Instagram has been giving us fitness goals. So I I wouldn't take that away from you. Apart from the I was great, worried great about his that he is. At first I was like, is he in his underwear? But no, he's wearing short shorts. I was like, I was like, man, this guy. I like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> I mean, you look good, bro, but like, <laughs> slow down the shorts yeah. a little bit, man. Yeah, somebody's got to remind him that there is an off-season. <laughs> there, there isn't a season and then a pre-season straight away after that. But, but, but that's good. That's, that's great to see. But I, I digress a little bit because I was taking a few fan questions. But that was a great yeah, chat. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. About go for it. Yeah, you uh, have to. Then there was one from, yeah, couldn't resist, could I? There was one from Nam Hai Anubhav who says, Rohan, do you know we, which is juggernauts, love you the most? Can we have a fan meet? I believe you're planning to move to Odisha full time, or you're at least considering I, the possibility. No, I, I think I think after well, now after again the COVID thing, but I was discussing this with my father, and I think I was supposed to be this year. I was thinking of living there full time. When the season starts, um, I'm always I'm always in Odisha. I lived I live there full time when the season is going on. Um, the juggernauts know they can always meet with you. I met with them before I left. Uh, they have my email. They have my DM me on Twitter. They always know, so they always reach out to me. I'm always there to talk to them. Um, I appreciate the yeah. love, guys. I love you guys a lot too. You guys have been, you know, I can't believe the amount. Did you know? I, this is a little off topic. Did you know that during this season, they gave me like monthly reports of where they were spending their money, how were they planning to like allocate their resources, and like they look all professional. It's like having a mini company, and they're, like, they're doing this like, all, like, and they're remarkable. They do everything themselves. They make all their own shirts. I asked them, do you guys like, need? Do you guys need funds? Do you guys, no, sir. We got this. They're they're there. They're they're everywhere. They're self autonomous. I don't know where they got this leadership structure from, but they're crazy and I, and, I, and, they're, yeah. and they're really nice. They're really nice. I told them you have to be a little bit meaner next year to like the opposing fans, but they're like, no, no, no. We're all family. Let's everybody come in, come to our session. We'll give you a hug and play the drum with us. They they just are just really warm people, and I guess it's the ODF people. It's just very warm people, and I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I can't I can't get enough of it. I, I did. I did hear you mention that uh, the the reports that they that they sent you the only fan club who possibly does that to an owner just sending Incredible. reports back every now and then. Yeah, that's with pie that's charts, with pie else, charts also. and bar graphs. It's like you're like reading like a stock portfolio. I'm like, it's incredible. How the, uh, it's really impressive, honestly. That's that's some progress for a 300 day old fan club. But that's that's fantastic. Uh, more power to them. Uh, yeah, man. yeah. Man. Uh, I, there, there's 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 more from there's more from fans, which is. There's Ooh. one from Rohit 
I, I can't even like pronounce this name. Rohitian Snehashish 45 got that. All right. How much do you love the crowd of Odisha FC from Kalinga Stadium? It's great. Yo, the, I'm going to be honest with you. This is, again, I'm not trying to be pandering. and Because I'm an owner, it's, I'm biased. It's my club. And so I tend to like, be biased. But if you go to the, if you stand in that area, it is, it is as loud as Kerala was in 2015, 2016, where you couldn't oh, hear wow. a thing yeah. in that area section. Where you, I remember I used to talk to, the, to like, my dad, and, and you couldn't hear anything during that Delhi Dynamo's Kerala Blaster playoff game, where you couldn't hear a thing. It's like that. They're so loud because the government, again, this helps having the government supporting you. They allow them to bring the drums, the megaphones, the whole noisemakers to that part of the stadium. And so it is loud. And they have, and now they're making up their own chants, which is cool. Um, there's this one video I can't pronounce, but they had this, they go, you know, says, da-da-da-da. they go, ah, and the guy will go, ah, and the guy will go, ah, and it's, it's really fun. And it's their own organic chant they make. I have done nothing to give them anything to like, to like yeah. say or do. They are a hundred percent organically built, driven, funded. They're all doing their own thing and they're doing a phenomenal job. You guys are amazing. The Viking clap we did um, was a lot of fun. I want to do our own thing because everyone knows the Viking clap now. It's too passe. Let's come up with something new this off season. Um, but I, I think that you guys are doing really, really, really good job. And for, like you said, a 300 day old club, it, it's going to just keep increasing. Yeah. It's just going to keep increasing, increasing, increasing. And it's, I'm going to be very, very touched. And I owe them. And I'm under pressure to make sure I give them results because they're going to turn on me if I don't give them results. They're going to put a effigy of me and burn outside the stadium. <laughs> so let's, so I hope it keeps going. I hope it keeps going. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, and the, the progress and the growth has, you know, has been staggering. And that's the only word I can think of in, in, in what yeah. they've achieved in less than a year is, is something else. But, you know, like I said, more power to them. But there, there's, and some of these guys have sent messages, including one from Captain Dot Som, who says, any message you want to give to juggernauts? And I'll extend that you know, message to the Kalinga Brigade and the Eastern Cyclone uh, as well. Uh, my thing to you guys is, I mean, I have nothing to say. You guys are, you guys are amazing already. What, what, I, I can't I can't say anything more to uh, be uh, how happy I am with you guys, how beautiful everything has been. Uh, you guys have always been just just really nice, really I don't know. It's just I, I can't even think of the words because it sounds everything sounds so hallmarky. You know, as you guys are doing a great job. You guys don't need me to say anything for you guys. I'm just so indebted to you guys for giving us a chance and really showing up and putting everything about it. Um yeah, I'm I'm proud of everything you guys have done, and I hope we keep growing. We keep growing as a family, and we we do this together. We have a long way to go. And I'm sure if you guys are listening to this, uh, you know exactly what you have to do. You, next time you 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 try and find Rohan Sharma's script, just come wearing uh, a Jingan T-shirt and 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 Jingan grow your hair long, as long as possible. <laughs> oh my god! Oh yeah, that's another thing. They like my hairstyle too. I don't know. They got, that became a kind of meme within the the juggernauts is my is my hair, which is kind of a. Take on a life of his own. <laughs> but let's see how it goes. If, he, if Jane keeps coming, I'll grow it with him. I'll grow it with him. I was going to ask you if, 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 if it's happened because of, of, if, you know, of all the stress and all the, all the frustration that comes with you know, running a football club and you know, having, having to face results like growing, going up 4-2 against Kerala then having to bear the ignominy of drawing that game or you know, coming up with uh, a win against... Or maybe even having different homes. You, know, like you had Balewadi as a home before you moved yeah. to Kalinga as well. It's... What were man, some of the, the challenges when you look back at that season, Rowan? Oh, man. I think, I think the two biggest challenges was the, the, when we first announced we were moving and then everybody wanted to kill me from Delhi. Wanted my head on a spike. Then I got, like, abuse for, like, two, at least two. Th- I still get it occasionally. But even in the chat now, I still see the abuse. I don't know if you see it. But, like, a two to three months solid, I got the abuse. And I was like, it was just, like, a lot. It, it was a little bit too much. Um, and yeah. the Balawadi one was, it kind of sucked because then after, when, because they had a hurricane that hit them and that kind of threw things off, and understandably so. Uh, yeah. But then once we had to announce that, I was like, oh, here we go. People are going to say, we, we moved from Delhi to Odisha to Pune, and now it says, this is the circus club that goes to whoever it is. And uh, it's just, uh, it was hard, but I think that was the hardest part. We look back at it, uh, it was the away games and announcing the move. But since then, it's just been, a lot, lot easier, a lot better. Everything has been working out well, knock on wood. I still think things will keep going that way. Everything's been beautiful, and I'm, I'm happy as I can be in Odisha. Really, I am. Even though I'm in Dubai right now. And have you, 
Yeah, and, and and what's what's the plan with Stuart Baxter in terms of you know restarting the season? You said you mentioned the Zoom call, but is that yeah. how you're planning to uh, stay in touch with all the all all the players and you know and 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 get Stuart Baxter more more sort of acclimatized without getting to Odisha? Yeah, that's going to be hard. What we're doing is we're also making him like a video of the city, so he has an idea before yeah. going in to see like the, the the facilities, the apartments, the 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 whole. uh the whole kind of infrastructure of how things are going right now um and uh so he's also that way it's hard you know how it's really hard when you have, you can't really leave your country to come and see for yourself yeah. so unfortunately a lot of it has to be through zoom or microsoft teams or or whatever it is and that's it makes things difficult but i'm hoping once we have things more clarity we can start a preseason really quickly ideally i like to start it in odisha itself because i want everybody to come to odisha get the feel of it we have great facilities um let me i don't mind doing a little tour around odisha we still have our partnership with aspire academy so maybe it's uh it's jump man trying to play on my phone. Can you hear me now? Hang on one second. I can. I swear. Okay. Just can one second. Can you hear second. me now? Solo. Yeah, it could be because we we finished an hour on Instagram, maybe that's why it's acting up a little bit. I can I can hear you and I can see you all right, so I'm happy to carry yeah. on. If, if all right, you no. Want. So no, I think I think it will just be something like uh, to that effect where we hopefully once we know we can go to we'll be in Bhubaneswar for the beginning and then probably go to Qatar for the next half of the of the of the trip because we have that deal with Aspire still. Partnership with Aspire. So hopefully it happens. And and in, and just in terms of you know uh, engaging fans, I mean your fans are already so engaged. But just in terms of uh, expanding this this fan base, trying to make the awareness of football you know a little more than what's what's already available to you in Juggernauts and the Kalinga Brigade and all of that. What are what are the plans in place from from the club's point of view? We want to do a, a proper fan park. So when we have an away match, we have like a nice like kind of carnival setting. because in in a, oops so in a, in odisha we have a lot more land on our in our in our you know, from the kalinga stadium there's a lot of unused yeah. land so i i did like to make that kind of like a whole kind of like a sports city and the government is trying to do that already itself um the other kind of kind of a uh, new and exciting wrinkle is having the under 17 women's world cup there so that's going to add things a little more maybe difficulties in terms of infrastructural use but i do think we'll find a way to come to have a kind of have a co-share thing but ideally i want we want to do more stuff uh with people in outside of bhubaneswar that's the big part of uh what i want to do is uh, start doing more stuff in different cities of odisha because it's not just bhubaneswar fc it's odisha fc and uh i want to go personally to these different cities maybe we do we bring one of the players and we have off ch- chances you know do more of our scouting festivals within the ci- uh, different these uh, cities because we got to get more odia players in the in the club which is what the their concern yeah. my concern everybody's concern is we want to get more odia players in the club and so hopefully these small things these more community aspects to kind of uh build the club up that'll be great that's what I really want to do in the next year and hopefully it's going to be a little bit harder with the covid shortened season but i think hopefully year after next things will be back to normal and we can really get the ground running with it and finally ron when you look back at that season with odisha uh, your proudest moment as somebody watching from the from the sideline or from the stands uh with this club my proudest moment uh you can name a few if you want no my my proudest i always say my proudest moment hasn't happened yet because my proudest moment is when we will hold the trophy uh <laughs> but i i do think the moment where when we first had that first we had the win over mumbai which got us to the top 4 and i was really emotional that night and we went to the fan supporters and we were just clapping and and uh that to me because for that short brief minute of time i i felt like what my plan had happened since 2016 17 when we first met it, it was coming to fruition that we got to the top 4 after 2 years of eighth place and starting off bad and people saying you don't know what you're doing you should get out of indian football and and that moment yeah. where we were in the top 4 for that brief couple of weeks stretch i felt like i told everybody calm down we're not there yet let me didn't of course the end we went down to 6 but I was like guys I didn't want to celebrate this yet but for that for that 5 minutes I had to myself I was just like yes and I just did that for like 5 minutes with my dad in the in my privately 
And then I just walked out and said, okay, I can't even think about it anymore because I knew we had a long way to go. But I would say that for that season, that was my proudest moment, but it, my proudest moment hasn't happened yet. When we get the trophy, we get to the top four. When Vineet is the captain of the Indian national team or Shilman is captain, captain of the Indian national team after Chetri retires, yeah. that'll be my proudest moment uh, as, an, as a president, as an owner. Um, and so hopefully that happens. Hopefully that happens. Yeah, because you're, you're somebody who's always supported the, the underdog theory. I mean, you, you let go of Anas, uh, the likes of yeah. uh, Sana Singh mentioned and uh, yeah, Shravik yeah. Chakrabarti. Yeah, you yeah. got in uh, people like Vineet and Changte and uh, Changte in Delhi yeah, yeah. and then Jerry yeah. and uh, Odisha, Samuel, the guys like Shubham, whose dad is uh, as active as Shubham is on the pitch. So, you know, things are working well for you. But, but yeah. just just in terms of uh, you as an owner, how, how much, how much, how much do you like to get involved with, you know, different aspects of the club? I mean, I, I'm pretty, I mean, I, I'm pretty, it's like my, my day job, like really. I mean, every day I, I'm, I'm with the team, I'm talking with the team, I'm, we're working on things because this is my full-time baby, as it were. Uh, like when I wake up on Monday, tomorrow, my first thing will be going through all my, fine, like the spreadsheets, Excel spreadsheets, I'm figuring out, okay, planning for uh, our kits for next season. Uh, working with the coach, like our Indian coach now, finally like that. We're talking to the coach Baxter about our our new other his other coach signings from his physical trainer and foreign players. Yeah. So my week is always a beak and other cheat, and and they keep me busy every day. I have a whole firefighting thing to do, and and uh, you know one thing I like is that my whole team is like you said the underdogs. I love underdogs because we're hungry dogs. I even talk to the team on our Zoom meeting. Is we're a bunch of we're, we may not have as much money as other teams. We may not have as much national team members as the other teams. But we're going to work harder than the other teams, twice as hard as the other teams. So we're going to be scrappy. We're going to play hard. We're going to play fast. And, and uh, yeah, I, it keeps me busy. All this planning for next season keeps me busy. And uh, we're hopefully trying to find a club to associate with, like how to work with. Because I would love to work with another club, like EPL club and La Liga club. Um, because our deal with Aspire is expiring at the end of this year. And we haven't decided if we want to keep it or go somewhere else. Um, so we want to see how things go. And, try to find new ways to do it, maybe find a new investor to help us kind of new sponsors too. Um, a lot of people have now gone into ISL. This is now with the AFC Champions League. So all this boring money stuff, that nobody where the fans want to hear about, but for people like maybe you and me kind of, kind of find it interesting, but um, yeah. that's how it is. But to answer anybody else, by the way, I want to, I have to say this because I always have to give one bomb and not like a, like a truth bomb at the end of every of my things. This messy story is not a true story. I don't know where this came from guys. So I see a lot of, a lot of people asking me about Messi. I, we never reached out to Messi. I don't know if we're going to sign him, but we never reached out to him. So <laughs> everybody can relax on that. If that. That's been a lot of questions about that. So don't worry, Carolina fans. He's safe to you for now. I've not made any interest in any approaches to him. So you guys can relax. Yeah. Uh, well, Messi, Messi did score at the, at the Kalinka. Uh, you know, did. just before I let you go, I'm going I'm to no, play no. like a quick rapid fire again. Do it, man. Because I've got to, I've got to ask you uh, a few of the questions that came in together. So instead of what I've done is I've just put, put the put the thoughts together and try and make a make a little quick round. So right. you know three famous results that come to my mind. Uh, one was uh, the one in Mumbai, which was two four, where Jerry scored and assisted as well. I think Jerry yeah. assisted two and scored one in that game. Yeah, the four uh, two, they went freaking. Everybody was like on something that day. I don't know what it was. Everybody was like clicking. That was the game. I was in, I was like shocked. I, you know the funny thing. Yeah. Is, I, one sorry, I, I have all the stories. I could talk to you all day. I, I didn't go to that game because I was so nervous I would be bad luck. So I stayed in the, ho the team's hotel. I stayed back. And I watched it on Star Sports. I didn't go I didn't go to the game because I was like, you know what? Because we had lost we had lost against Jamshedpur and then we Jamshedpur and then we I think we lost to what was it Bangalore or something? We lost somebody else too or Drew and I think we lost. And I was like, I'm too scared. I'm bad luck. I don't want to go to this game. And I we went and I stayed home and I stayed in the team's hotel and we won four two. And I was screaming in the hotel lobby. The manager was like screaming with me because I was I read a lot of like, ah! and everybody was going crazy and, and even the hotel itself they were also pumped up when we came back the whole staff came to wait just to welcome the team back because they were like because I, I was yeah. in the lobby just fired up I was fired up waiting for the team to come back I was so nervous but I, I was so good. that was a great game sorry I I didn't interrupt you with that no no that's uh, fine that's fine I wanted to ask you your favorite out of the three two win against Hyderabad the two four in Mumbai and of course the the 4-4 four, four in Kerala, where I think which is the only game you guys had a lead and you let go this season. I actually, I, I, the easy answer is the 4-2 Mumbai, but let me tell you my actual favorite, my fa favorite uh, game, was the 2-0 against Chennai. Why? 
because Jerry scored that game, and I think he assisted, and Chante didn't score at all. And that was his first return back to with, against me. Yeah. So the petty side of me, even though I love Chante, the petty side of me was really happy Jerry got a goal in that game. I don't think he assisted. I maybe assisted. I can't remember. Maybe you remember. But I know he scored. And I was like, Jerry scored in that game of all games? And I was like, so happy. I was like, mm, that's right. That was for me. Uh, but yeah, that actually was. If I'm wrong, was Jerry's got the fastest goal in ISL history. So I mean, in, yeah, in, yeah, any, yeah. in any game, you've got that's that record in, in the defense. <laughs> Fair yeah, enough. Okay, then, then the other one was uh, we already asked you about Aridani or Onbu. But if you had to pick between Vinit Rai and Chubham Sarangi, who are you going to pick? Yeah, that's me. What's my favorite kid, man? Are you? This is like that's like every. This is like my, I love. I can't. That's both equally. They both have been since they were like sixteen. I can't even answer that. I was asked this question. I don't. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to embarrass the fans. So, so may as well just put it all together in a, in a round format. <laughs> really, honestly, they're my both. I can't really answer. They both have been since those are my two first picks of everything. So I can't. It's like if you told me like even between like Shubham and Gorb, I could say Shubham because Shubham has been with me longer. But like I love them both equally, man. Oh, I, I can't even. Vinit, it's like my. I think this year Vinit's gonna be like a more. Even both of them actually. I think both of them are gonna be really taking up leadership roles this year, because Shubham, Shubham has a very leadership mentality for his young age. Like, yeah, uh, he know he's training at four in the morning. He's getting up in the morning at four a.m. His dad's waking him at four a.m. and he's doing like drills at five a.m. outside his house, like Michael Jordan. And I told him, I said, did you watch that Jordan doc? I said, I I hope you are because you have that you need the mentality to get the next step next yeah. year. And Vinit too. Vinit has that mentality where he is just like, he's hungry. That's why I love my boys. They're hungry, man. They don't care, but they're not the money. They're not for the fame. They just want to win. And they're tired of losing. So that's what I love about them. Is they're tired. They want to really just go for it. And, you know, I'll go to war with them. Any Shubham, Vinit, I'll go for them. If they tell me to go to fight with them or go to war for them, I'll go for war with them any day of the week. They tell me where and when, I'm there. I'm there with them. Honestly, they're, they're, they, they mean too much uh, to me. So I can't pick between them. I can't. It's hard. It's I'm a glad I didn't ask you to uh, Vinit or Jerry. I, I thought I'll make it a three-way three -way battle, <laughs> but uh, thankfully, thankfully you settled it with two. So, okay. All right. That, that, that might be unfair. But okay, there, you know, there, I also watched the session and I wanted to ask you, if you were to pick between 21 Savage and, uh, and Genesis, the, the, the Oriya rapper who you wanted at the stadium for next season, who are you going to pick? I would pick 21 Savage. Nobody would know who he is besides me. But I'll go, I know it's a selfish answer, but I'll go like 21, if you're like 21 Savage, you brought Kanye, you brought, uh, I don't know, Freddie Gibbs, you brought, I don't know, I'm trying to think who else I can think of off my head. Uh, I don't know. But Run the Jewels, you bring like anybody like rap to that stadium, I'll go crazy. I love rap music, but I'll pick the American rap. Because I don't know, I listen to some of Genesis songs, it's, it's fine, it's not for me. I watched, I watched, uh, what was the one with Nas produced uh, with the, uh, what's the, what's the rap? Bollywood movie that came out that everybody loved. Oh, the Gully Boy rap. That's yeah, that's the yeah, one. Yeah, Gully Boy, Gully Boy. Dude, I watched that, and I mean, so I because I have to translate some of it in English, so I think the lines are kind of funny. But, but I mean, I still prefer I still prefer my 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 American raps. Even though even though I respect what you guys are doing. Hey, rap has to happen anywhere in India. I don't care if you're from Tamil Nadu. You're rapping. Do it. Do it. You should do it. That's what rap is all about. It's good expression. But uh, I for me musically for me I prefer. Um, American rap. I do love when they when they sample Indian music into rap, though. There are like rappers who do that. Tipperland does that quite a bit. I can send you all some yeah. songs later if you're interested. But hit me up on Twitter if anybody's interested. I can send you songs where they sample Indian music and they and they make rap out of it. So it's pretty cool. That's really cool. I like that. Imagine rap playing out at the at the Kalinga Stadium in a, in a collab yeah. between the Twenty One Savage and Genesis. That would be that would be something. That would, so that would be the day that happen. Indian football goes like mainstream, mainstream. Like you, would, the, the internet would break. Like in the Beyonce comes out in a in a plume of smoke, and, and yeah. Beyonce just comes in, you know, just over. And Odisha, no less. Forget it. That'd be amazing. We should get Beyonce oh, in no. the league, the league opener this year. Pull some strings, man. You have all the clout <laughs> out there. Tell the Star Sports, we need Beyonce, we need 21 Savage, we need Kanye. To do the league opening this year, we got to do this, guys. Let's do it. My job is to just hit the live button and go live, uh, Rohan. Honestly, that, that, that's, that's what I do. But, you know, in your case, you can just say, who's stopping me? That's all That's all you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> Good reference. I like the reference. No, no, but, but um, and, I, and I wanted to just... No, because because we are you've already answered so many questions, and and I okay. didn't even get a chance to to gratify some of the fans who asked those questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you one about uh, uh, Joseph Gambao because you know yeah. he had a he had a big role to play in not just Delhi, 
and yeah. uh, of course then moving to Odisha. So I saw it one in one of the comments. I'm sorry I missed the name of the fan, but uh, that's something that uh, that I wanted to get your thoughts on because Joseph had his had his own, you know, say in the way Odisha ran things last time around. Yeah, no, I think Joseph's biggest uh, Coach Cabal's biggest thing was his family was living in Delhi, and he couldn't want to. He he's a big family guy. He's a big family man. He had to be with his family, and his family didn't want to live in Odisha. So that was the biggest thing. I know he said he didn't want to live in Delhi. There was some like headline, the goal post that if he had stayed in Delhi, he would have stayed. But I don't think, because he also had his problems with Delhi, with the pollution. Like he hated the pollution. He hated the travel time. It was more than the fact that his, me, his family was going to school there. They had just adjusted. He didn't want to move them out to and fro. Um, but as a coach, as a person, he's a great man. Um, one of the most honest people I, I can think of. Um, he helped the club out when we, I mean, when we moved, we even asked his advice, like, do you think we should move? And he said, yeah, you should. Uh, he said, he thought it was a good idea. And he, from day one, took it on the chin, no matter what we did, we were playing in Pune that temporary time. When he came, when we had our first week in Odisha, he really got involved. He tried his best to do everything. And so he, he's a good guy. I'm happy he was my first coach. He was one of the first coaches to have in Odisha. And he was good for that reason. But I'm really excited to think what Coach Baxter can bring to the table now with a little more experience, a little more, you know, wisely older and more experience on that end. And I think he's going to bring his own brand because he's saying how, like I asked him, I asked him this and between you and me and the 84 people still on here. I asked, I asked uh, Coach Baxter, I said, are you going to get bored in Odisha? And he goes, no, I want to get bored. I said, it's a smaller state. I mean, it's a very nice state. You have your beaches, you have your temples, your tourism sites. He goes, Rohan, if I'm bored, I'm not doing my job right here. I'll be, I'll work with the youth academies. I'll go to talk to schools. I will go in the community. I will do, I'll do other things where I can help make a difference in Odisha. My wife will come in. Maybe we'll do our own things where we can set up some NGO stuff. He said, if I'm bored, I'm letting you down as a coach. And so I, that's one of the answers that made me really like, like, okay, that's a great answer. I can't really fault that answer. So I, yeah. I, I, I think that coach Kambal was the first good step, like getting to the point. I think Coach Baxter is going to take it to the next level of that, uh, of our of our journey. Perfect. And, that, and, and that's possibly the best note to end it on as well. We wish Stuart Baxter, you and yeah. your team, all the very best for, for the next season. And I hope to chat a lot more uh, before yeah, the next man. season comes around. Oh, I'll see you around. You're always there. And good luck. I saw you doing parts after me. So we didn't talk about my, my banter with the Bangalore fans back in 2017, but I'm sure... <laughs> that's what another Todd that's for this after dark when you talk about Indian Super League live football live after dark and we talk about all the drama <laughs> that's on WhatsApp Ron that's on WhatsApp alright <laughs> <laughs> alright man I take it easy man Tell okay. you have a good time thank we'll you so much you for your time Ron take care cheers man bye 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 Well, that was fun with uh, with Rohan. Hope you guys, uh, the Juggernauts, Kalinga Brigade, and the Eastern Cyclone uh, enjoy that. Thank you so much for all your questions. I tried to take as many as possible, uh, and then Rohan, in his own uh, you know lovely style, answered as many as as possible. Asked him one, he gave me two answers as as always, which is why it's always a lot of fun uh, to chat with him. But uh, thank you for staying on, and thank you for uh, uh, for listening to this. Uh, we've got Par Jindal, uh, the owner of Bengaluru FC, tomorrow. So. Uh, fire away with all your questions and I'll see you at 5 p.m. with another edition of Let's Football Live. You don't want to miss it.